This is Math Facts That Sound Fake But Are Actually True Part 2. This shape is called Gabriel's Horn, and it is one of the weirdest shapes in mathematics. It's formed by taking the graph of y equals 1 over x from x equals 1 to infinity and revolving it around the x-axis. What's amazing about this shape is that it holds a finite volume. Its volume is actually equal to pi, but it has infinite surface area. Put in a more fun way, if you had a can of this shape, you could fill that can with paint, but you could never paint the can. Six weeks is exactly 10 factorial seconds. This is because six weeks is equal to six weeks times seven days times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. But 24 is equal to three times eight and 60 can be written as both five times four times three and two times three times 10. That is six weeks is equal to six times seven times three times eight times five times four times three times two times three times 10. And combining two of the threes into a nine yields six times seven times nine times eight times five times four times two times three times 10. And rearranging that and multiplying by one since that doesn't change anything yields 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 10 factorial seconds. The maximum numbers of moves needed to solve a Rubik's Cube is 26. That is, any state of the 3 by 3 Rubik's Cube can be solved in 26 moves or less. This unbelievable fact at least makes the world records for Rubik's Cube solving more believable. Holy crap! Nope, Max Park's world record is still totally unbelievable. Congrats to this cubing master. There are an infinite number of odd prime numbers, but there is only one even prime number. Two. This is because every other even number is divisible by two and hence isn't prime. In a similar line of thought, the commonly used definition of a prime number as any positive integer that is divisible by itself and one is not a correct definition because the number one satisfies that definition but is not prime. The correct definition of a prime number is a positive integer that has exactly two distinct divisors. And under this correct definition, we see that one is not prime. To settle a similar common misunderstanding that zero is somehow both even and odd, it isn't. The number zero is even because it's divisible by two. A regular polyhedron is a polyhedron that is formed out of faces that are all congruent regular polygons. While there are an infinite number of different types of regular polygons defined by how many sides the regular polygon has, there are exactly five types of regular polyhedra. These are the five platonic solids, the tetrahedron, the cube, the octahedron, the icosahedron, and the dodecahedron. That's it, just those five. No other types of regular polyhedra exist. It's possible to add up an infinite number of numbers and get a finite sum. Zeno, an ancient Greek philosopher, famously and unknowingly discovered such a sum. He argued that it was impossible for a runner to reach the goal line of a race. This is because first they would have to run halfway there, and then you'd have to run half the remaining distance to get three quarters of the way there, and then half that remaining distance and so on. But there's always half that remaining distance left. Because there's an infinite number of halves to traverse, you can never complete the task. But clearly that isn't true because runners finish races all the time. The reason why this works is because if you successfully add halves of halves, that is if you add up one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth and so on, you actually get one. Zeno's other argument that an infinite number of tasks would take an infinite amount of time to complete is equal false for the same reason. So long as the length of time required to complete each successive task approaches zero, then there's a chance that the infinite sum of smaller lengths of times add to a finite amount of time. And indeed, the sum of the infinite number of periods required to complete each half of the run is finite and adds the length of the time the runner needed to complete the race. But not every infinite sum adds to a finite number, even if the numbers added together get progressively smaller. For example, the harmonic series adds one half plus one third plus one fourth plus one fifth and so on, but it diverges to infinity, or put more simply, sums to infinity. Now you can understand the following typical math joke. An infinite number of mathematicians walk into a bar. The first says to the bartender, I'll have half a beer. The next says, I'll have a quarter of a beer. The next says, I'll have an eighth of a beer. The bartender interrupts and says, I'll stop you right there and hands them one beer. The next day, the same infinite number of mathematicians walk into that same bar. And this time, the first says, I'll have half a beer. The next says, I'll have a third of a beer. The next says, I'll have a quarter of a beer. And the bartender interrupts. What, are you trying to ruin me? And if that's not enough to mess with your brain's sensibility, how about this? There is no real number immediately before one or immediately after zero. This is because if you had the least positive real number, you could average that with zero and find a smaller positive real number. Similarly, if you had the number that was the closest number to one that's still smaller, you could average that number with one and find a number even closer to one that's still smaller than one. And some of you might cry foul here and say, but what about the number 0 0.999 repeated? Well, this number can be written as the sum 9 tenths plus 9 over 10 squared plus 9 over 10 cubed plus 9 over 10 to the fourth and so on. And this sum is one of those infinite sums that adds up to something finite. And in this case, this sum adds up to one. That is, the number 0 0.999 repeated is actually equal to one. But there's far more bizarre things that can happen when you add up an infinite number of terms. We all know that if you add up a finite number of terms, you can change the order however you want and not change the sum. But for some infinite sums, rearranging the terms can cause them to add up to something different. 
Such infinite sums are called conditionally convergent. For example, consider the sum 1 minus 1 plus 1 half minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 third plus 1 fourth minus 1 fourth and so on. This sum not surprisingly adds to zero. However, if you take the same exact numbers but add them up in a different order where we put two positive terms first and then a negative followed by the next two positive terms and the next negative and so on, that is if we add 1 plus 1 half minus 1 plus 1 third plus 1 fourth minus 1 half plus 1 fifth plus 1 sixth minus 1 third and so on, we get the natural log of 2 even though we added up the exact same numbers. In fact, if you have a conditionally convergent sum and you pick any arbitrary real number at random, then there is some rearrangement of that sum that adds up to the real number that you pick. Now that our brains have sufficiently disintegrated, I'll end with the coolest fact I know. The coldest possible temperature, or absolute zero, is zero Kelvin, or negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Okay, that wasn't a math fact, but you gotta admit, facts don't get any cooler than that. Well, that was math facts that sound fake but are actually true part two. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a part three. And please hit that like button and subscribe to Scholar Sauce. If you missed part one, you can click on that video here. And if you'd like to simply enjoy another fun Scholar Sauce video, click here. We'll see you next time.